Let's start by building a first project on your local computer. We want to set up a local NEOS project and as a really good best practice setup, we are going to use the code Q NEOSkeleton. You can find it here on GitHub and it provides you some very good structure, which is both beginner friendly and later can be scaled really well. So let's jump to the getting started guide and you'll see of course, we have some requirements which are coming from NEOS. We have to have a web server running locally. We have to have PHP 7.1 Composer, as we have discussed in the last part, and we need a database, in this case, MySQL or MariaDB. To get started, we are going to use all the structures is provided in this project and just clone it. So we're creating our own copy. We will call our website we gonna guess what's the point of it i'll explain explain later and now it loads our project here and we want to jump directly into that folder so we change the directory to yana gs now as you have remembered from the dependency management part every package has a name in the beginning it's the organization and then it's the package name and in the default this is called code q and of course you want to use your own package name here there's two ways of writing it there's the the package name which is written with camel case and a point and then there's the composer version which is written with a slash so let's copy that first part here and we're calling it vienna.js.site okay and uh, for composer we want to call this vienna.js site and now we just copy paste the rest here this will automatically replace all the places where the namespace code q is used and instead we'll use the namespace vienna.js let's open project locally and here you can see it already has set up a distribution packages folder inside that we have vienna.js.site and here it has the name vienna.js.site and it also replaces these names throughout the whole project so for example let's go into some fusion code you'll see it always uses the vienna.js namespace just following the steps here we are going to remove the neoskeleton documentation folder because we don't need that in our own setup so let's configure a language now we go in the configurations folder and into settings.language.yaml first you see here there's a language defined for for flow and then we have continent dimension so th this is where we can later configure multiple languages and here we can define how the user interface to so the administration area will look like we want to have this post here set to english for the tutorial because that website will be in english and we want to define uh, content dimensions in this case languages so we want to have only one language which is english so let's change all that. Um, so we'll disable this one here and enable this one here. The important thing to notice is this one here configures the languages which are allowed in presets. And here we have one which is called DE with a label uh, German. And then the value and the euro segment your segment is what will be created in the url so um, in this case it would look like vienna gs.org slash en dot my uh well, let's say some site if we would set that your segment to empty and it's the default language so this is important that it's the default language then you could have it this way. And if you would enable this as a second language and set that to DE, we could have the German version like this. If we would again define here your segment of, of English, it would look like this. So we want to have just one language, English. So we'll configure it with an empty Euro segment in English and no German.
the next thing we want to do is we want to create our own repository because of course you don't want to publish that code in your skeleton but we want to have our own repository so you can go here under your repositories and here i'm going to click new and i want to have that as a vienna.js repository name website and you can choose if you want to have it private or public now let's create our repository okay this is now empty here in the next step we are removing this old git folder this means the one from new skeleton and just initializing a new git project here we need to define our username and our repository name this is where we have used right now vienna.js website .git. and now this means that from now on it will push that code to our new GitHub repository. So let's fetch everything from GitHub. And the next step here is that the composer installs all the packages. This step here will take quite some time. The first time, because it really goes through every package which we have defined here in our composer JSON, loads it, and then figures out its dependencies and load those. And now we'll create here a packages folder with all external dependencies. Okay, it finished. And now here you'll see one extra file called composer.log. And the point of this file, which you should check into your Git repository, is that it defines the exact versions of all the packages which are required. So you can see, for example, from this translator, we have 1.2.0 and um, carbon compressor 1.1.1 and it defines really the exact version we're using here so you see it's a very long file it's not supposed to be normally read by humans so next time you're running composer install it will actually only take the package defined in this log file which makes installation much faster and make sure that you have exactly these packages uh, we can also see that here in our packages folder we have all the dependencies now loaded and our local dependency which we have vnhs.site is inside packages site you can see this links to this folder okay now we add all the existing files uh, to the git repository and we commit those as a copy from neoskeleton and then we push it to github you'll see that if we now reload the website here on GitHub, it's already created. Great. Now we want to start the project locally. First, make sure that your database server is running. So now the last thing we have to do is to run flow server run, which will in your development environment start a local web server. Now, if you browse to this IP, You'll see that news is running and that we need to configure the database. That's perfect. Now we just go through the setup routine. Okay, so now we have to find the setup password, which of course is a protection if that would be live. Let's open it and I'm copying that password. Now it configures a image manipulation library, which is installed on your local system. I'm just going with this one, that's fine. We can here configure the local database server. So in my case, it's root and root. And it's now connecting. And here I can either select an existing database or select new database. Um, let's call it Vienna.js. And next. Now I can create a user to later log into the administration area. Here it's important that you already use a good password. Voila, and here we have the option to already import some basic content. And we want to use our site package. Let's go into what that actually means. If we go into our vienna.js.site package in resources, content, sites.yaml, and this defines that we have one node of type document homepage. So very simple. Let's do that. All right. And now we have set it up. If we go to the front end, we can see there is no content. It just says your brand name and the copyright. And now if we go into the back end, which you do by writing slash Neos, we can log in here and we are in the back end of Neos. You can see it already created this uh, first document, which is called home. And here we have a page not found which will be the default site if you open a path which doesn't exist. So there's one last really important thing to know. In YAML, the 
structure always need to have exactly two spaces for indentation. And besides the YAML thing, you also want to have a consistent style of your, your uh, Fusion code and of your front end code. There's a file called editor.config and this defines a default configuration how the indentation works. So in this example here, we have tabs as default with a size of four. And for YAML, we use two spaces. This is really cool if you work across a team and if multiple people would typically have a different configuration of their editor, uh, editor config makes sure that everybody uses the same configuration, which is great. The only important thing here is that you need to make sure that you have a support for editor config. So if you go on the website, you'll find there are plugins for all the typical editors. Make sure you have yours installed and then everything will be working out of the box.